In Space Watch, NASA's Perseverance rover is working to solve mysteries on Mars. It landed on the red planet just a few weeks ago and is already gathering clues to help us figure out if life ever existed there. Elizabeth Duffy is a mechanical engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. She's part of the team that worked on the Perseverance rover, and she joins us now. This is so cool. So, Elizabeth, um, President yeah. Biden, uh, you had a call with your team yesterday to congratulate all of you. Let's first play a clip of that, and we'll talk about it. I just can't tell you how much I believe historians are going to write about what you did at the moment you all did it. At the moment you all did it, you should take such great pride, such great pride in what you did. We can land a rover on Mars, we can beat a pandemic, and uh, with science, hope, and vision, there's not a damn thing we can't do as a country. Science, hope, and vision. Uh, you know, that's just, I mean, that sort of encapsulated, that encapsulates the entirety of what you all are doing and how significant it was to land this r rover on, on Mars. Um, what was that like talking to the president of the United States and explaining to him what our goals are here? Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool to have President Biden call us. Um, felt really honored to, to to be able to be a part of that. Um, he really hit the nail on the head to me in, in that we achieved this at a really critical time in our country when, you know, maybe people have been feeling down over the past year, uh, needed a little um, encouragement, you know, and uh, uh, maybe didn't know what, what our outlook and future of science was going to be. Um, so, you know, here, us at NASA, we never stopped pushing forward, and, and we won't. You know, science is the future. Um, it's, it's what's going to allow us to understand more about our world and other worlds. Um, and I think he, you know, I think he, he really got that. And uh, it's, it certainly was uh, very exciting for, for us to get that call. So Pers Perseverance landed uh, last month in a crater that once held water. Can you talk to us about, you know, how the rover finds and picks up samples? Is it looking for, you know, certain factors or is it just sort of like scraping up whatever comes its way? Sure. Well, wait, is it confirmed that it did have water? Because if it did, then that would indicate life, right? That's well, right. Well, once so had water. I think that's why they picked the crater. That's exactly there's a possibility. right. So from from uh, aerial views from orbiters, what we do is we look around Mars and we look for geological formations that look similar to those on Earth. Uh, so from that data, we do know that this crater, Jezero Crater, was m probably once a lake bed. Um, and just by uh, looking at different parts of that for those formations and comparing them to Earth. Now, we even pinpointed a part of the crater that we think would be most interesting for science. And that is the edge of a crater where it looks like there was a river delta. And so if you think about uh, life, you know, Earth and river deltas and, you know, water flowing into bigger parts of, of uh, a lake, it really is a, a intense area of, of life. Um, there's deposits that are left on rocks. There's uh, microbial life that exists there. And so that's what we're really looking for. So um, we, we uh, pinpointed a place that we wanted to land that we think is going to be most interesting to sample. Um, and we have a state-of-the-art sampling system on the rover. Um, that is what I mostly worked on as a mechanical engineer. I was lead engineer for the turret, which is the hand of the arm. So it's all the equipment at the end of the robotic arm um, that includes a coring drill. So that drill is going to um, core into the surface of Mars, into rocks, and actually break off a piece of that rock. Um, it will be about the size of a piece of chalk. Um, now that uh, sample will be ingested into a tube uh, that is installed into that bit. So once we have a sample, we reach back into the belly of the rover um, and we give that uh, sample over to another whole system that is inside the belly of the rover. Now this smaller arm actually takes that sample tube and takes pictures of it. It does some tests to see how much of a core we collected. Um, and that's gonna tell us a little bit of the success of breaking off that piece of the rock. 
Um, and this, yeah, this animation is showing that. Um, this is when it goes back to the belly of the rover and drops that off. So cool. Now, um, eventually, yeah. we then dispense a seal into that tube. We seal it up and we hold it in storage in the rover that at is... some point during the mission. <laughs> That that is just so 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 very cool. I know it's like I know I can I, I hear the excitement <laughs> as you're describing it. To, yeah. <laughs> as you're describing it to us, you're just getting more and more excited. And then guys, and then it does this. And, you know, I which, can't help it. I know, no. And it, well, it's funny because my puny brain is trying to keep up with with all of this <laughs> math and science. And um, it, it's it's sort of like uh, it's trying to start an old jalopy. It's like so so. Let me ask you. The rover also picked up. The first ever audio recordings of wind okay. on Mars. I want to play some of that for you. So, so Elizabeth, it was the same thing when we first um, sh played some of this sound on our morning show, CBS This Morning. One of the sound engineers came out and was all geeking out. He's like, "Did you hear that? Did you hear the wind on Mars?" Like, and I'm like, all these like people who are engineers are like geeking out over this stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. So, what is what is hearing the wind on Mars tell us about the atmosphere there? Sure. So I think of the microphones on the rover as adding another sense for us. So we have the cameras, we can see we've got really great close up images of Mars. Now we're going to be able to hear it also. And it just is going to give us this whole picture of what it's like to be on Mars. Um, hearing the wind is just so awesome. I mean, when you think about it, we are hearing something that is so far away on another planet. And now we know what that how what that wind gust actually sounds like. It's going to just be able to uh, tell us a whole complete story of Mars which is what we're after. Elizabeth, before I let you go, um, really quickly, I mean, just to I had a lot of friends in college who were engineers and they all work for hedge funds now. Um, why <laughs> did you decide to take, uh, why did you decide to pursue this path um, in mm -hmm. pursuit of, of science and now space, space exploration? If you can tell, I'm just so excited about it. Um, I think it's uh, it's just uh, it is the future, and it's also such a fantastic environment to work in. Um, everyone that I work with, everyone at NASA and JPL, are just as excited to be doing this exploration for the world, for mankind, as I am. And so, um, it's a great place to work. I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. You know what, Elizabeth, I'm really looking forward to what Perseverance finds as sort of part of your main push and goal. But I know there's going to be all sorts of other things that come up by mistake, by accident, like lucky mm -hmm. accidents that are also going to be discovered that we'll be talking about as well. Um, so really appreciate you spending time with us, Elizabeth Duffy. Thank you so much.